What's up, Mavs fans? Remember this guy? He might be coming back. All right, all right, calm down, calm down, calm down. Don't get me wrong. I don't want Chandler Parsons back in Dallas any more than you do. However, something interesting has been floating around there the last 24 hours. A possible trade offer. Now, let me explain why I would be willing to take Chandler Parsons back. We all know that deal Memphis gave him. Same deal that we gave Harrison Barnes, by the way, which was a four-year, $94 million deal. We all know that was a horrible offer for the Memphis Grizzlies to give Chandler Parsons, especially coming off back-to-back -back years with surgery on the same knee, especially since the dude has fallen off of the face of the earth as far as his productivity and general mobility. The fans in Memphis never had a chance to like him. All the same, Chandler Parsons is still owed over the next two years about $49.5 million. But here's the thing. Memphis, not only were they one of the worst records in the league last year, really only rivaling Phoenix and Dallas, not only were they one of the worst records in the league last year, but they had one of the higher payrolls. We're talking approximately, this is from memory, I could be pretty off on this for all I know. I want to say they were like $40 million in luxury tax this past season, and they put forth that kind of effort. They have, you know, everyone said they were tanking trying to get the number one pick last year. Well, Dallas fell hard too, landing at five. Memphis didn't do much better. They landed at four. And the word is... Memphis is so desperate because their team is so far from really contending. Anything they want to do to rebuild the team, they're financially strapped right now. And so their move is they got to get out from under some of these bad contracts. And candidate number one, the worst contract on their books, probably the worst contract in the NBA right now, is Chandler Parsons. Now, Dallas doesn't want Parsons back, but here is why. Dallas can and should take the deal. Now, if we were talking about Dallas moving up from five to four, hell no. I'm not taking Chandler Parsons just to move up one pick, but that's the thing. They're not just moving up. They're keeping pick five. Dallas would have pick four and pick five if they are willing, and they've said they are, to take on the last two years of Chandler Parsons. They will eat that horrible, wretched contract and get picks four and five. They will dominate the first round of the NBA draft if they have those picks. So you give up pick 33. You give up their pick somewhere in the 30s. I want to say 33, 34 for Dallas is their second round pick. You give up that pick and a one next year with a top five protected by the way so if dallas is a lottery team and ends up picking anywhere in the top five they keep that pick and you send them a guy like dwight powell maybe wes matthews or someone like that harrison barnes is not on the table dallas has made that clear they're not sending him in the deal but if you send that then one wes matthews has one year left on his deal dallas they're not ready to be a playoff contender I would actually welcome the idea of sending out Wesley Matthews for that. So you're getting out of your own kind of bad contract. You're giving up only a second, which Dallas doesn't know what to do with draft picks really anyway, unless it's a top 10 pick. And you're getting extra protection for your one next year if you just suck out loud. So, pick four and five. You know who you can get with that? There's a chance you could wind up with something like Luka Doncic and Mohamed Bamba. That's not bad. You know what's also interesting? We've been talking a lot lately here on the Dallas Prospect about Michael Porter Jr. Dallas is meeting with him again for a workout. This will be their third time either meeting with him or watching one of his workouts. I don't know why I have this extra finger over here, but their third time meeting with him or watching one of his workouts before the draft. You know what's also interesting? They've already said that they are comfortable, quote, comfortable with the risk associated with his health. They feel that if healthy, he is hands down a top three pick, 
We're talking about a guy that is 6'11", with a wingspan over 7 feet, who can shoot the ball from anywhere and create his own shot with great athleticism. That is Kevin Durant. That is his NBA comp. You got Russell Westbrook last year in the form of Dennis Smith Jr. Now you can have your very own Kevin Durant for a Dallas Mavericks edition of the Oklahoma City Thunder circa two years ago. Well, probably earlier in their career, but with that, you know, general comp there. You could have that. So you could you could end up I was I did a video the other day talking about Porter Jr. or Bamba. You could get both, maybe. Who knows? The fact is there are so many possibilities. And think about this, right? Because of their ages, by the time these guys are hitting 21, and I'm talking Smith, Smith Jr., whoever, two guys we draft. Let's say I'm just going to throw two out there. Hell, I'm going to throw out there my my favorite options there. Let's say Porter Jr. and Bamba. I think Luka's gone before five. But let's say you have those three. That is your superstar core right there. By the time those three guys are 21 years old, you have three guys believed to be about that time on pace for superstarhood in the league. Oh yeah, and you have $70 million in cap space. That's not a title contender, that's a dynasty. Okay, Oklahoma City, the OK3, the original OK3 when they had Harden in there and he was really emerging. Yeah, they didn't have that cap room. They had the three kids, and they had Serge Ibaka. That was a really nice piece, too. But they didn't have the cap room to keep that rolling. Dallas can do that. If Dallas does this deal with Memphis, if they are willing to take two years of Chandler Parsons, hell, pay him to go away for all I care. But if you take two years of Chandler Parsons in exchange for this, you have picked four and five, you will dominate the headlines for this NBA draft in the first round. You will get one, potentially two superstars that can be the cornerstone of your franchise moving forward with Dennis Smith Jr. There is zero reason the Mavericks should not take this deal. Memphis has already said they gotta get out from under this deal with Parsons. They have to, it's crippling them. Their ability to do anything is severely hampered as long as he is on their books. But you can't just get out from under that deal. You got to give up something, and it's going to be a pick. And the only way you get out of that contract for them is if you give up one of your top 10 picks. They're giving up pick four. Dallas isn't the only team that can take this deal. Other teams can eat the Parsons contract. No real contenders, but other teams could probably eat the same deal and maybe even give Memphis back some better pieces. So if I'm Dallas, I'm on the phone right now. I am trying to seal this. Get it done get it done right now i'm not even joking this is a dynasty building move this is like i can't remember ever being this excited and pumped up about the nba draft from a mavericks perspective like this is uncharted water for the mavericks here not i mean even in the case of dirk that one you know for fans at least kind of seemed like it came out of nowhere so it, it's just it's incredible what they could do with this. And they got the flexibility, too, as far as their cap situation. There's talk that even if this move didn't work out, they could get a move, a different deal, where they still get something and they get an active stud player. Who did Mike Fisher talk about on 105.3 The Fan? Now, he posted one of those more intriguing names out there, but it's another team in a financial situation, like I mentioned, with Memphis, where they have to do something. They are spending... Big, big money every year, and they are stuck in a wheel of mediocrity they can't get out of. So they got to do something. He mentioned Bradley Beal. If you can get a pick and Bradley Beal, that's really intriguing as well. Now, we'll see what comes of that. Uh, I don't think, obviously, he can't do both. It's not like you're giving up uh, a first round. It's not like you're giving up a one next year or something and doing that. You can't do both trades, and if I pick one... I like Bradley Beal as a player. He'd be a nice piece, but you're playing the long game here. You're playing the long game, not not the short-term thing here. I don't know what Bradley Beal's contract situation is, but, dude, you take the dynasty play. That's the play you take. You, oh, my God. $70 million with three potential superstars, or let's just say 
two superstars and one very nice player in, in Bamba, perhaps. If you have that, plus $70 million, do you know the kind of players you can bring in here? It's not even about recruiting at that point. You can just wallet whip somebody out there to get them into into Dallas. You go get a superstar if you got, hey man, look at these three studs we got and we can pay you max dollar. There's no way, no way that, that someone would turn that down if we're talking four years down the road. Dallas is a major market, major city. They would have three studs, one or two superstars of those studs, and then that much money to throw at you this isn't like going to play with lebron or the warriors or before the heat when lebron was there when you're looking at taking like a veteran minimum it's not like that situation where that's where you're looking at you're talking about being able to pay top dollar to get some of these guys now maybe you still try and work it you don't just throw all your money at a couple guys you still try and spend it somewhat wisely but you got the money dude you can go do something with it that is incredible. The opportunity that opens up just on this one trade is incredible. It would basically be the Mavericks equivalent of the Herschel Walker trade. Now it's one draft and it's two picks. I get that, I understand that. But as far as the impact it could have on the team within the next few years, which is what I've been saying for the Mavericks, you can't look next year, you can't even really look the year after that. You gotta look four years and beyond down the road to see when this team will be peaking, when they will be ready and hungry and legit contenders again. That's when you're looking. The possibilities that open up by doing this trade now, giving those guys the time to develop and to make a name for themselves on the scene, and you keep your cap situation in a good, you know, good position in the future. Ooh, son. I'm telling you, everyone looks at the Warriors. I'm talking Warriors before KD. That was incredible how they built that team. And before them, how Oklahoma City built their uh, their core four and their roster that uh, lost in the finals to the Miami Heat, that was damn impressive as well. Dallas has an opportunity to do that right now and do it in a way that neither of those teams did. Having more money than they know what to do with almost and making things happen. Whew. Man, we'll see if the rumors prove to be true, but for Dallas, this is incredible. Again, I don't like this guy at all. I was very disappointed in his tenure in Dallas, but you're telling me I got to sit through two years that I don't expect to be competitive anyway and eat his money during those two years. It's not my money. I got to sit through two years of him wearing Mavericks warmups on the bench because he's too hurt to play. Fine. I'll take that for the fourth pick. I'll take that right now for the fourth pick. This is probably, if Dallas can make this work, this is not only the move to win a title, it's the move that could spawn the next dynasty. But that's all the time I got for this video, guys. If you like this channel, if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you want to support us to help us put out more content, uh, hire more contributors, you can support us on Patreon.com as well. Also, don't forget to check out the website, thedallasprospect.com, your home for Dallas sports and all things pop culture. And remember, guys, every legend was once a prospect.